Here is an article at the end of the pro-institutionalist publication uh, referencing the issue of whether certain language should be used on food packaging. A major 2018 report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change blamed animal products for three quarters of food related greenhouse gas emissions, according to this article. So basically, they're saying that um, the farming industry is the cause of the demise of the planet, including the extinction of its species. So the problem is the problem that the animals are the cause of the destruction of the planet and in return they are destroyed. This is possible. A man may play a slight role, and it may be more than just the farming industry. Because if you read this, it says right here, they blamed animal products for three quarters of food-related greenhouse gas emissions. Well, are humans animals? According to the scientists, they are. According to the scientists, they came from monkeys, which may be logical. Do these monkeys produce things? Yes, they produce oil, which then gets burned into the atmosphere. So this is another example of the deception used in the language that needs to be scrutinized and, and you know, scrutinized carefully observed because it does not mean that the statement is false it just does not um, it is not interpreted as referring to humans when it uses the word animals next point the law is no joke you can receive a 2000 fine and spend up to a year <laughs> Wait a minute. A $2,000 fine up to a year? That's a misdemeanor. A few months after the measure was signed in June, free speech advocates and vegans teamed up to fight it. Free speech advocates and vegans. So, they're <laughs> referencing these lawyers as heroes heroes they they then say uh, that this is they're fighting it on the grounds of the first amendment so they think the labeling the food packaging is their right under the first amendment you can't go to state college and read from the bible let me tell you but you can tell somebody something is real when it's not. That's what they're trying to say. Now, we should have reason to believe that they will win. Because, remember, the democracy is what is known as common law. But once this goes through, then they never have to label GMOs. And even if you are a vegetarian and you go to buy fake meat, that package might tell you it's fake, even though it's real, which maybe probably wouldn't happen because they know it's going to cost them more. The whole idea is to cost less. Because of the devastation of the planet, they don't have the resources to feed the cattle. They can't do it. 
The prices are going off the roof. So, even though these companies may act like they're opposed to this new approach, they're behind the companies making the fake meat. Because those at the top of the chain run the supply game. So they're on the end. They're not letting anyone else in unless you want to do that thing. And they're going to run it. The last bit of this article says the law is a solution to a non-existent problem. This is really about the government trying to control the words used to favor in the industry. I'm talking about the meat industry. So this article's for these so-called free speech and vegans. Ain't no doubt. You know, when they re read, re write these articles, you want to know which side they are? Read the last paragraph. Read the last paragraph. Even on the, the news, the British Bowl. If you want to know what it's about, save yourself an hour or half an hour and just listen to the end of it. Skip the rest. This uh, ACLU attorney, the ACLU. Now, wasn't the ACLU the ones that were supposed to be fighting for free speech? Now it gets even more sketchy. It says, the statute's champions say the law is meant to protect consumers from confusion. ACLU is skeptical. No one who gets a veggie burger and bites into it is surprised when it's not slaughtered animal meat. Now, what did he just say? He said that people are already able to distinguish of what's real and fake. Well, if people are already able to distinguish, then there would be no need for a labeling or a regulation of labeling because people can already tell. But he's supposed to be for the statute which regulates labeling. So his statement is just backwards. And that in itself is the confusion. When they like to sell something, they bring on an opposed viewpoint. And then they tell that person what to say.